Hello everyone, welcome to a very wet, very grey, very windy West Somerset at the end of March 2024. And welcome also to episode 53 of the Eldenwood Craft Knitting Podcast. You are very welcome here and I'm looking forward to spending a bit of time with you today chatting about the things that I've been making since my last episode. Uh, that episode was at the end of January. I had intended to be back at the end of February. However, um, the work that went into preparing for the East Anglia Yarn Festival, which was at the beginning of March, just took over my life and I didn't really have the, the brain space to record an episode either. So we have got a bumper episode for you today. Uh, what have we got? We've got some FOs. I think we've got one, two, three, four, five finished objects, a couple of works in progress, little bit about what I'm going to be making next, finishing off next. Um, I've got a couple of questions to answer. I will share a little bit about what I've been reading and at the very end there will be a little bit about what is in the shop at the moment. So I hope you have got uh, a project on the go with you, a drink if you would like one. Um, I am just going to get straight into what I've been making. Oh, I should say two things before I start. All the information about, or not all the information, but links and things like that, details of what I've been talking about uh, in this video will be in the description box underneath the video. And what I am wearing, I am wearing my Yume sweater, which is a pattern by Isabel Kramer. Is it Isabel Kramer? Yes, I think it is. Um, I knit this... It was either last year or the year before. Hmm, might have been two years ago, I'm not sure. Um, knit it out of drops, Nord in one of their grey colourways. I can't quite remember which, I do apologise. Um, and I wear this an awful lot. It's a really comfy sweater. Um, it has pilled a little bit, but not massively. It needs depilling. Um, it's never been depilled. Um, and with the amount of wear that it's had, I think it's lasted. It's, it's kept in a pretty good condition. Right, what have I been working on? Um, quite sock heavy. The last couple of months have been strange because um, I've not really had much um, energy, uh, energy, headspace for knitting, anything particularly complicated. So in the run up to uh, East Anglia, uh, I very much focused on very simple easy make so it's quite a sock heavy um round up today and then when east anglia finished i really got to work on a couple of other projects that i had been wanting to finish um because i'm going up to see the people that they are for uh, this weekend oh it's easter weekend i'm recording on the thursday before uh, the bank holiday weekend i'm hoping that this video will be up with you uh, either on Good Friday or Easter Saturday. Um, so if you're watching round about the time it goes up, I hope you have a lovely Easter weekend. If you're watching it at another time, I hope you're having a lovely day. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get into the things that I have finished. First off, a pair of socks that I showed you that I was working on in my previous video. Um, and these are a pair of vanilla socks, bit blown out, I do apologise. Because of the greyness of the weather today, I thought I would record downstairs in the living room in front of our big windows, because uh, it's so grey upstairs uh, and it's so dark everywhere else. Uh, but that does mean that things might blow out a little bit, particularly if they're light. But these are my, um, just a pair of vanilla socks in my, in a colourway that I had in my first yarn shop update at the end of last year. And this was the Posy colourway. Oops, there are two. Let me just pick up what I've dropped on the floor. 
yeah so there are two uh, and this is just a simple vanilla sock uh, I did a contrast cuff and toe I'm just gonna see I've, I've just had a fiddle with the setting so I'm hoping I don't think that's made much difference anyway um, so this is the posy colorway from my first yarn update I did contrast heel and toe um, and then just a regular leg I did a mini heel flap and shadow wrap heel the mini heel flap idea I got from watching uh, the earth tones girl podcast a little while ago um, and I, if you know the if you know Denise of the Earth, Earth Tones Girl podcast, you know that she's a great advocate of the shadow wrap heel. And I've knit a couple of these before. I really like them. I do prefer them to a German short row, I think. Um, but I thought I'd give the mini heel flap um, adjustment a go as well. The mini heel flap adjustment comes from one of the Knitting Expats sock recipes, sock patterns. I can't remember which one but I'll put it in the um, description box below uh, but what it does it just gives a little bit of extra depth um, to the instep when you are working a short row heel I haven't worn these yet so I don't know whether the difference is significant enough for me to notice but um, I may report back as and when I've worn these uh, yeah and then just a plain knit foot and a standard wedge toe my foot is a size 6 UK and I knit to um, seven and a half inches from the back of the heel to the start of the toe which normally is around about sort of 68 rows for me and this leg was knit um, I did 30 rows for the leg really pretty I have got a version of the posy yarn in my shop at the moment I will show you that later so yeah one lovely set of socks off the needles and ready to wear oh I should say that the pair weighs 54 grams I always find it really interesting to know uh, how much a finished object weighs um, it's often quite different to the yardage specified in a pattern uh, but I guess pattern writers add in a little bit of um, extra yarn just to be on the safe side but anyway right so that is the posy socks the next pair of socks I cast on um, I cast them on to use up um, odds and ends that were lying around after I had finished my granny wrap um, project that I showed in the video in the last video in the last video I was on the fence about whether I was going to make it any bigger or whether I had done with it and um, I showed it in all its full glory and I was hedging towards it being a finished object and I can now confirm it excuse me oh dear <laughs> I can now confirm it is a finished object I added no more to it I've been using it most days and I absolutely love it and I'm sure I'll make another one but I'm not showing that off because I showed it on the last episode however I had a ton of um, odds and ends to use up from having finished that and I put them into another pair of socks I'm just going to put the other one on the blocker as well because it is slightly different so here they are and you will see <laughs> you'll see that they are similar but not identical and what I did uh, I basically um, did very little colour management other than I knew that I wanted different colours next to each other. I knit them concurrently and each band was in the same sort of um, colour house. 
so the tops were uh, or the cuffs were knit out of a sort of variegated pink the next stripe was a lighter uh, lighter uh, yarn with some greens in it then I went sort of ready pink uh, this was a bluey yellow um, and you can see on the other side it's got bluey yellow uh, then we did a grey I used the same pink for the heels um, and then we went sort of a olive greeny, pinky and so on. So they are not identical but they are similar. Uh, and then again this is just a basic vanilla sock so I did 16 rounds of 2x2 two two rib. I did uh, 40 rounds for the leg. I, I don't have a preferred length of leg. Um, tend not to go much above 40 or 50 rounds for the leg though. I did a heel flap and gusset with a garter ridge on the edge and then I knit to um, seven and a half inches again which um, as I said is about 68, 68 rows something like that and again I did a uh, standard wedge toe. Uh, I haven't weighed these um, but it's going to be maybe about 60, 60 odd grams. I don't know. That's a guess. <laughs> um, I will put the details in the Ravelry notes though when I write, write these up, if I haven't done so already. Um, and I did 10 rounds per colour. I really like these. I've got a few pairs of scrappy socks now and they always make me really happy when I put them on my feet. So these will probably go away now that it's the end of March until the autumn. But yeah, it's a really good way to use up, um, oh, excuse me, I've got a runny nose. It's a really good way to use up your odds and ends. Uh, oh, excuse me. Um, and to weave in the ends, I use the clasp weft join method of joining yarns. Um, which I often use. It's a um, nice simple way which means you don't have any ends to weave in at the end of your project and um, I don't have a tutorial that I use. I, I just know it now <laughs> um, but if you look up clasp weft join on Google you'll find loads of tutorials. I know Louise Tilbrook has got one actually which is worth looking at. Now the third and final sock that I have finished um, over the last couple of months was a test knit. This was not a sock that I had anticipated I would be knitting, uh, but it's one that I was very pleased I did. And I'm just putting them on the blockers. So it was a test knit for um, <clears throat> lovely Hannah of Yarnia Designs. <coughs> Excuse me and she put out uh i'd seen these socks on her instagram she's a really lovely um set of minis and a main skein anyway uh, she put out a call via email that was it um and when i saw the picture i thought oh i'd really like to knit those i don't do a lot of test knitting because i'm quite a selfish knitter i like to knit for myself and i I like to knit what I want to knit when I want to knit. So if I see a test knit that I like, I might apply for it. <clears throat> and that's exactly what happened with Hannah. Anyway, um, to cut a long story short, these are the socks. These are the jungle, jungle sunset socks. Uh, and the, the pattern is out now. These are the size small. Can't remember how many stitches I cast on. I should say for my for my sort of regular vanilla socks that I knit, I always cast on 60 stitches and I use 2.25 millimeter needles. I never say that, but um, I think it's always useful to know. So 60 stitches, 2.25 millimeter needles. These I think we're a 60 stitch cast on but I can't quite remember and again they were 2.25 millimeter needles and it's basically made up of these different sections um, each of these is one repeat and if you can see 
you'll see that there's a lovely lace pattern that's mirrored on the other side very simple but really very beautiful I chose again some odds and ends so a really good stock for um, using up leftovers um, interspersed with a sort of larger the, the brown that you can see that does the tough cuff toe and heel and the interspersed browns are all from one um, skein of yarn that I had left over from a short pair of socks I think and I had quite a lot left so I used that and then the other minis were just um, odds and ends that I had lying around and I thought they worked quite nicely together. Um, each stripe takes up about two to three grams so it's a really good way to use up um, what you've got left over your leftovers. I'm not explaining this very well. I'm out of practice and do apologise. Um, and the pair of socks weighs 63 grams and I think it was a was it a 12 round repeat um, once I'd got a couple of um, the repeats under my belt I was away really one of those patterns because of the nature of the repeats um, you do tend to knit through it quite quickly you know just finish one more repeat um, and then you've got a pair of socks done they knit themselves um i did um uh, my only problem with the sock which was totally down to me as a tired knitter um you will notice on the leg oops you'll notice on the leg that there's a pearl ridge in between each repeat now of course when you get down to the foot um you would only do the pearl ridge on the um top part of your foot uh, I got to the end of more well, fairly near the end of both feet and realized that on two or three occasions I put the pearl ridge on the underside as well had it been a pair of socks that I was just knitting for myself I might not have bothered but because this was a test knit and I wanted them to be perfect for Hannah I went and I um, frogged back to um, redo the um the feet properly i think on one of them i had to go all the way back to here um and on the other it wasn't so far down but um, that's a, a a lesson to uh, just read the pattern properly and um pay attention to what you what you're knitting okay so those are the socks that i have finished I have also finished two garments and I said in my last podcast that these were the garments that I was going to focus on. As I said earlier, I um, picked these up after East Anglia uh, and finished them just in the last few weeks, or well, the last week or so actually. So the first one is a Tolster tee for my mother. Um, it's a pattern by Rebecca Clow, Clo, Clow, uh, who is also Cray Bear Knits here on YouTube. One of my um, and I'm sure most of you will be aware of her Tolster tea pattern. It's um, it's everywhere, <laughs> and I have wanted to knit one for ages for me, um, but then I was um, given some yarn. Have I got? Yeah. I was given some yarn by a lovely friend and I thought that this yarn would be perfect for my mum so this that my tolster is knit in Rowan Pima Cotton DK in the colorway uh, I think it's oh it's clay um, it's a beautiful cotton DK weight yarn is it pure cotton 100% Pima cotton. This is a discontinued yarn, sadly, um, but it produces a really beautiful garment. And here it is. Hold it that way so you can see. It's a very simple, uh, plain t shirt, raglan sleeves, uh, with quite a loose 
gauge I think the gauge the pattern gauge I wrote this down is 19 stitches to four inches and no that's my gauge pattern gauge is 17 stitches to four inches um I got 19 stitches and this hasn't been blocked yet but I'm guessing it's not going to um grow particularly I hope it doesn't uh, but yeah so it's not been blocked but you can see how beautiful those stitches are I made the size three for my mum uh the pattern it is a simple pattern but it's so beautifully written with lots of detail and um another document that comes with it with loads of modifications or ideas for modifications that you can make um as i said it's a dk weight uh pattern but rebecca has also um released in the same pattern a uh, a fingering weight version she's very generous with her pattern releases in that she packs a lot of um, options in those um, I've just purchased her Lauder pattern which comes with a sweater a cardigan and a vest all within one pattern and within those three garments you can knit them v-neck and round neck so essentially you're getting six garments for one very reasonably priced pattern um, yeah so yeah anyway <laughs> Uh, what else can I tell you? I knit size three. This weighs 221 grams. So these balls are 50 gram balls. And so that's just over it's four, and a, four and a bit, four and a half balls. Um, so quite a nice economical uh, pattern. Uh, will I make another one? I am sure I probably will. Yes. Um, probably in a well I actually I, I quite enjoy knitting with cotton um so maybe I'll knit myself a summer version and a winter version I think Rebecca's working on a long sleeved version um so I might I don't know there's so there are so many patterns to knit aren't there um if I decide it, it's something I could do within my wardrobe which is um one of the factors that I will use when I'm trying to decide what to knit next um, so if it comes to the point where I want to knit a t-shirt then this would be a pattern that I would go to that's the best way to put it yeah so next job for this is to get it blocked and then I'm going up to see my mum this weekend um, for Easter and this will be her Easter treat she tried it on when I went up just before Christmas um, and it fit nicely um, at that point and I just then had the sleeves and the ribbing at the bottom to do that took me a couple of days uh, so yeah I'm really pleased with that I did say to my mum on the phone this week that I would be bringing it up and she had no room no recollection of uh, trying it on um, so it would be a nice surprise for her I she won't remember it right I have one more finished object to show you I'm just going to go and get it because it's currently on a heated rail blocking so I'll be back in a minute okay so the other uh, garment that I finished is the Sonia sweater that I shared in my last podcast which was a um, something that I was knitting for my daughter and I'm also going up to see her she's up at uh, in universe not at university not a million miles away from where my mum lives so I'm um, doing a two for one trip this weekend um, which would be lovely uh, now you can hear all about the sort of evolution of this sweater and how it came to be knit in my last podcast so there was quite a story behind it um, and it is now finished it's still slightly damp it's blocking uh, it's heavy cotton acrylic and it's taking quite a while to dry um, I've got it on heated rails at the moment, um, lying flat. So um, I will just share the, the basic details of it. Here it is. It's quite big. I mean, it does, it fits me. 
looks slightly small on me but um, it fits me now pattern is by petite knit um the yarn is this brand yarn art jeans plus Uh, in three colours, um, I'm not going to tell you the colour numbers because I can't remember, um, but they will be in my Ravelry pages when um, I've written it up. Um, this is a cotton acrylic mix. I really did not enjoy working with it at all. It creates a really nice, soft, finished uh, fabric. Um, I have no complaints with that at all but just when you're working with it it is so tightly spun I mean you can see here it's curling up just as it lies flat so tightly spun that it it curls into itself so much and the balls are so loosely wound that when you get sort of halfway through they just bath everywhere um, so I will not use that again I really didn't enjoy it however it's a cotton acrylic it means my daughter can just chuck it in the washing machine um, and not worry about um, taking particularly good care of it while she's away at uni uh, I haven't weighed it feels very heavy it's I knit size one um, and I, I got gauge uh, did I get gauge yes I, I did get gauge um, I think I got 17 stitches across, um, 17 stitches to four inches, which is um, what the gauge is specified in the pattern. Uh, but it just feels like it's really big. The, the, the test will come when my daughter tries it on um, on Monday um, and we will see if it fits. Um, I didn't particularly enjoy the yarn aside, I didn't particularly, excuse me, I didn't particularly enjoy knitting this project. It became a little bit of a chore. Um, maybe it's because it's a, it's a drop shoulder construction. So you have to knit, you knit, you start at the back, you knit a back, a back panel, you then work the shoulders, knit the front panel um, and join under the sleeves and then knit flat um, and then you pick up for the sleeves on either side knit your arm da 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 um, I think I just prefer knitting a raglan construction I'd really like to try a, contig a contiguous um, constructed sleeve at some point in the not too distant future um, to see how that works out and what that fit is like um, Personally for me, I don't think a drop shoulder is um, a sweater that I would particularly want to wear. I, I prefer my um, my sweaters with less positive ease and a drop shoulder does tend to have more positive ease, doesn't it? So um, I don't think I'll be knitting too many more um, drop shoulder projects in my future. Um, I knit it almost to pattern. I made a few slight modifications. I didn't do the the ribbing on either the the sleeves or the the hem anyway near as long as petite knit has in her pattern and I didn't do the um the folded over neck band which I normally enjoy but I felt with this yarn it might be just a little bit too bulky. I think I might be wrong about that. I think it would work fine with a folded over neck band but the neckband was the last thing that I knit on it and I just wanted to get it finished if I'm honest. However, every stitch was knit with a whole lot of love for my daughter. That's what I'll tell her. I'm pleased it's done. I'm pleased it will be going to her uh, over the weekend and I will report back maybe with some photos if I'm allowed um, to show you what it looks like on. Anyway, that is my last finished object. How are we doing? I'm doing okay. Right, on to what I'm currently working on, and that is just a couple of um, couple of pairs of socks. First pair of socks I've had on the needles for quite a few weeks. They were cast on as sort of car knitting, uh, and I really like them. I finished one, 
and I'm a good way through the second. Just pop it on blocker. And these are gorgeous. West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4 Ply in the Passion Cooler colourway. Beautiful stripes. Um, nice woolly wool. I think the, I think the Signature 4 Ply has got quite a bit of um, Blue Face Lester in, hasn't it? Which I really like for socks. I knit these on a two and a half mil needle just because um, I think with commercial yarns when I knit on a 2.25 the fabric is much denser and they never feel particularly nice on my feet so I um, decided to go up a needle size for these and I'm really pleased that I did. Um, again it's just a vanilla, vanilla socks about 16 rounds of 2x2 two two rib about I think that's about 50 rounds for the leg. Heel flap and gusset with the garter um, edging and then straight down to a wedge toe. I oh there's the there's the yarn in its ball. So nice. Haven't knit many West Yorkshire spinners yarns, um, but I'll definitely use this again or use uh, signature full ply again because I really like knitting with it and then there's there's the current sock number two whoops on goodness me <laughs> on DPNs I always knit my socks on wooden DPNs uh, and you can see I'm coming up to sort of halfway down the leg the the foot so these will be finished in the next couple of weeks I imagine and probably put away until the autumn as well because we are getting to spring which is the best news ever <laughs> although lots of people today in the UK have had snow apparently um, if you believe the weather forecast we had snow overnight but there was no sign of it when I woke up this morning which I'm very pleased about um, okay and then my final pair of socks that I'm knitting on, I'm in about the same position actually with these socks as I am with the West Yorkshire Spinner socks. And I'm just going to put the knit pair on blockers and here we go. So a pair of shorty socks. Uh, I did 10 rounds of 2x2 two two rib, 9 rounds of cuff, I did the heel flap and gusset with the garter edge again and then knit straight down to a wedge toe. Knit on 2.25mm needles, 60 stitches cast on, just a nice simple sock. I really enjoy knitting plain vanilla socks, uh, they're kind of my soothing meditative project. The yarn, oh actually let me just show you, here's, here's the second sock uh, and again I'm about halfway, halfway down the foot. Here is the yarn and this beauty is one of mine. Uh, this is the uh, Golden Ticket colourway, 75 merino 25% nylon in the shop at the moment although I think there may just be one or two skeins left but it's um, lots of lovely browns, caramels, um, I really like this colourway, it will be coming back if it sells out. So yeah final pair of socks on the needles and not, not just final pair of socks, final everything on the needles. Okay Let's have a look at what um, I'm planning on making next. If you um, recall in the last episode I had quite a few works in progress on the go which is quite unusual for me. I don't normally have, I think I have like seven or eight things on the go. I never have that many projects on the go at any one time. I normally have like one or two or three no more than that. 
Um, so I'm my focus over the next month or so is to finish off what is currently on my needles. And the two that I'm going to focus on uh, first, I have shown these in the last episode, so I'm not going to spend terribly long on them. But in my beautiful uh, project bag that was a gift from a lovely friend, thank you, Sarah, is my um, Inga, Inga Shala or Inga Shawl uh, with the very obvious. Uh, oh, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? It's got a very obvious mistake in it. A double double row where there should just be the one. Um, anyway, uh, this is very nearly finished. It just needs an I-cord edge um, added to it. So when that is done, I will share that. I'm not going to give any more information at the moment. And then the other project that I'm working on, um, or that I'm going to be working on, um, is my ranunculus that I have only just started. Uh, knitting it out of Drops Bell in this lovely dark blue colourway. Drops Bell is a mix of cotton, viscose and linen um, and I knit a theotop out of it, a cream coloured version, um, last summer and I really enjoyed wearing that so I'm going to give the ranunculus a go. This is my first ranunculus, uh, one of the very last people in the world to have knit one. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to the reason I'm hesitating, I am going to knit this, but I'm considering ripping it back um, and just knitting it on slightly smaller needles. I think I'm knitting it on the needles that were called for in the pattern, six millimetre needles. Might go down to a five because I'd quite like a not quite so loose gauge. You can see the gauge there. But that's something for me to cogitate on uh, over the next few weeks so I will um, report back on progress on that next time. Am I looking really washed out? I hope not. If I am I will see what I can do in um, post-production editing. <laughs> right the other thing I'm going to cast on, no I'm going to talk about that in shop news um, because the stuff's all the way over there and I don't really want to stand up at the moment. Um, actually no, I am, because um, this leads on to talking about East Anglia Yarn Festival soon. So the other project that I'm going to cast on um, in the next few weeks is something using some yarn that I picked up at East Anglia Yarn Festival. That's where my train of thought was going. Right, so segue into a quick chat about East Anglia. Um, so if you've not been here before, if you didn't watch the last video or you don't remember, um, I um, vended at the East Anglia Yarn Festival. This was my first big yarn show uh, and I had an absolute ball. It was such a good couple of days. It was at the beginning of March and um, it was hard work over those um, two days but I had superb um, support from my lovely friend Sarah, thank you Sarah, and from Dennis my husband who came along as well and actually I think he quite enjoyed himself um, much to his surprise but he was brilliant as well. Um, I got absolutely zero footage um, um, from meeting people. Lots of lovely people came to the stand and said hello, said that they watched this um, podcast. If that was you, thank you so much. It was so nice to see actual people in real life. Um, it was it was lovely. Um, I'm a very introverted, quiet um, uh socially uncomfortable individual um, so it was totally out of my comfort zone um, but I really enjoyed it and would I do another one? Absolutely I would. Um, the only thing with 
going to a show is that it takes so much time to prepare stock and with it being my first show I had absolutely no idea how much stock I should take so I spent the whole of January and the whole of February just making stock for East Anglia. I totally overestimated um, so I had a lovely big shop update last week and I'm going to share some of what's still in the shop at the end of um, the podcast. But I still think it, even if I, um, I'm, I'm more informed now about what is needed for a show, um, but still it's, um, it's, it's a big time investment to prepare for a show. So I would need to put in some serious thought about what the right show is, what time of year is the right time of year to um, to attend as a vendor and that sort of thing. I really want to do another show. Oh, sun's coming out now. Uh, I really want to do another show. Uh, so we will see. We will see. Not this year. Um, you know. The two months that I spent preparing for the show, I couldn't put anything in my shop. And that really, that really niggled with me that I wasn't able to do that. So, um yeah that's something i need to give some serious thought to but it's it's on my radar um east anglia itself great venue superbly organized so thank you to laura and her team laura is the lonely knitter here on youtube um, and she is a yarn dyer as well um so yeah she was her and her whole team were brilliant um there wasn't anything more that they could have done to make it a better show i don't think um Anyway, um, oh, the other thing I was going to say about it was um, if you want to see what East Anglia was like and you would like to see me on my stand as well, um, pop over to um, Ali at A Little Drops of Wonderful, um, her podcast, which you probably all know because she's mega famous and just a wonderful person. Um, but she, um, she was at East Anglia and has done a really beautiful uh, vlog about her two days there and um, it was lovely to spend time with Ali um, over that weekend. Anyway, what I was going to say was, um, oh yes, yeah, so what I was going to say was I didn't purchase very much at all at East Anglia. A, I didn't have a lot of time obviously, um, but B, I didn't really go there with the intention of wanting to pick much up. There was one thing that I did want um which i will show you now because i absolutely love it and it's really heavy i picked myself up one of these huge baskets from injabulo and this now sits down here on the other side of my chair and that's where i keep all my whips and it's the best thing i've had done to organize my knitting um, in a long time so that that was my main purchase I also, I'd been talking to Sarah, my um, friend Sarah, who was there with me over the weekend, and on one of the days she had um, a ranunculus on that her, she had used some fluff for. And I don't really, I've, I've knit one thing using fluff, but it's never really interested me. But seeing Sarah's ranunculus got me thinking that maybe I should try again. So what I decided to do um i went to shannon's stand shannon is blue fern yarns and if you've been here before you know that we um tend to do an annual collaboration um and we're going to be doing one again this year hot off the press <laughs> um apologies sunny again um and i picked up a skein oh this is going to be terrible there we go picked up a skein of her surreal baby surreal alpaca mulberry silk in the blue jeans colorway Oh, you won't be able to see that at all. But it is, you know, it's Suri Alpaca Lace. It's beautifully soft. Um, and it is, it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to combine it with this rather lovely skein of yarn from me. <laughs> this is my Yak Sock base in the colourway School Jumper. So I'm going to pair the two of them together. And I'm going to knit the near and dear cowl that is a pattern on the Pearl Soho website. So that, my ranunculus and my Inga shawl are the three projects that I'm going to focus on 
um, over the coming weeks as well as getting my socks finished off so look out for um, progress on those in the next video the only other thing that I came away with from East Anglia um, was thanks to my husband I gave him 20 pounds um, and sent him off to have a look around the, the show and asked him to come back with what he felt was the perfect skein of yarn for me from a stand that he thinks I would um, or from a vendor that he thought I would love and do you know what he absolutely nailed it <laughs> this is what he came back with it's, it's so beautiful it's just perfect and he got that from the lovely people at the Camel's Yarn. So this is the intertidal colourway. And I don't know if you can see, but it's a singles. It's a singles yarn. So 100% uh, superwash merino, 366 metres to 100 grams. And I love it. So thank you, Dennis. I have no idea what I'm going to make. Well, actually, no, I do have some ideas. I'm tempted by a muscle bra hat or I'm tempted to make a cowl it's going to be either there or there that's for sure and it's going to be used on its own so that these gorgeous colours can um, be star of the show so yeah so he did well and that is everything that came back with me from um, East Anglia apart from my stock that I will show you later right I've got a couple of questions that I was asked in I've got hair a couple of questions that I was asked in my last ep uh, after my last episode and I will answer those here um, the first one is from Carla Berger 5631 I'm assuming your name is Carla hello um, thank you for your question. Carla asked, um, or Carla was interested to know how I started dyeing yarn because she is interested in doing that herself. Um, very simply, I could go into a lot of detail but I'm not going to, but very simply, um, I basically watched the whole of the internet, all the videos on the internet that have ever been made about how to dye yarn. Um, there's a lot out there. And it can actually get a little bit overwhelming. Um, so I've made a list of the one, two, three, four, five video or five people that I found most helpful. Um, I'll list them below, but they are Ken Knits, um, K from the Bakery Bears, Arcane Fiberworks, Essence of Autumn, and um, Wool Needle Hands. There's also a lot of blog posts and things like that, but the videos I've spent such a long time last year watching videos about how to dye yarn how to mix colors um all the different techniques and um i ended up being slightly overwhelmed by it all and putting off starting to dye but i um sort of have um oh what's the word to sum it up in a nutshell basically you need your yarn you need your choice of dyes, acid dyes, um, if you're going to be doing it to sell. Um, and there are many different companies that sell acid dyes. I particularly like to use Jacquard, um, Landscape dyes, Dharma dyes and Country Craft dyes, Colour Craft dyes. Um, I've got a range of dyes from all of those producers. Um, you need acid to let the dye soak into the yarn. You can use citric acid, you can use white vinegar. Um, you get, as far as I know, you get the same results. I'm not an expert by any means, uh, but you need a form of acid and you need water and heat to set the acid. There are different ways that you can do it. Um, I've used three basic ways of dyeing yarn. I either dye in like one of those flat hotel pans um, I dye in a stock pot which is probably my least favourite way of dyeing because you get less less control over your end result and I also like to dye, I dye in a plastic 
long plastic tub and hand paint or pour over um, dye and then heat the uh, finished product in a steamer. Um, I would say if you want to get started watch a little bit on YouTube um, but don't overdo it because you can as I said you can get you can get overwhelmed and that can stop you going for it. The, the hardest thing that I found is learning how to get the colour you want. You can just use the dyes as they come out of the, the tubs. You can use different amounts of dyes for different strengths, for different um, depths of saturation. But the real sort of artistry comes from mixing the dyes together to get different um, colours. And that's kind of what I'm working on at the moment. It's great fun. It's hard work. It really is hard work, but in a nice way. Um, and yeah, so I hope that answers your question, Carla. Um, if you want to ask me anything else, then um, feel free to leave another comment or uh, drop me a message on my email or on uh, Instagram or wherever. Um, the other question I had was from Caroline EJ. There might have been a number after that and I might not have written it down, but Caroline, this is your question. Um, and Caroline, I'm guessing, is a um, usually a monogamous knitter and she wanted to know how I um, how I manage having how I manage what I'm working on, how I choose what I'm going to knit next, um, and what I wrote it down. Wanted to know how I manage what I'm working on, where I'm up to, and how to decide what to work on next. Um, that it's interesting that that followed the last episode where I had a lot of projects on the go. When, as I said earlier, that is an unusual situation for me. Usually, I try to have one large garment project and maybe one or two smaller projects, like a pair of socks or a hat or something like that. And that is a really nice number for me to manage. Um, I tend to knit on my larger projects after work in the evenings where I've got a longer stretch of time um, or at weekends as well and my smaller projects I tend to knit on sort of for half an hour in the morning or when I'm out on the go um, I might knit on them then. I've got a long list of things that I'd like to make haven't we all um, but what I tend to focus on when I'm choosing what I'm going to um, knit on next is either is there a deadline coming up, what do I want to wear in the next season or whatever it is, um, or what do I need more of in my wardrobe, or what do I need a new thing of in my wardrobe. And I tend to plan that out monthly at the beginning of the month. And having these videos actually is a really good way of um, helping to manage that. So can see that I've got a plan for April with the three excuse me the three things that I'm going to work on in that month obviously things new sparkly things catch your eye and you don't always stick to that plan but um, that tends to be how I manage what I'm going to knit how I manage where I'm up to in all those different projects is one of um, sort of three ways I'll either use a notebook so I have got like notebooks that I um, keep in my project bags and in my project basket now um, and I use that maybe to tally off rows and things like that but I predominantly use the notes phone on my app and I've got a separate file for each project that I'm working on and I make notes as I go and then I can just copy those notes straight into my Ravelry page when it's finished. Um, I also have used Notion. I use, I use Notion which is a sort of a second brain app. Um, I use that for an awful lot of st stuff, predominantly for work um, and also recording my books. Um, but I also have used that for organising projects and lists of what I'd like to make and yarn I'd like to use, but I don't tend to, to turn to that now. So my main way is um, little notebooks in project bags or my app on my my notes app on my phone uh, I think that was all that I yeah so I hope that helps Caroline
Um, if anyone else has got any questions, I'm always happy to um, happy to oblige. Right. Next section. Just a quick. I get so many comments after I talk about books about how much you enjoy book the the book talk. So I am going to include a few books in this video. I know we're probably getting to quite a long episode, but um, you know. It's the long weekend and um, you might have a bit of extra time around or you can watch it in chunks. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to talk about the books, some of the books, not all of the books that I've been reading over the last few weeks. Since the last episode, I finished or read loads of books. Most of them were audiobooks because I've been working so much. Um, and I'm not going to tell you about all of them. Um, the ones I was reading from memory in my last video, um, ba Babel, I DNF that. All of a sudden I decided I wasn't enjoying it. Um, it suddenly, I just had a mental block about it and I decided that I wasn't enjoying it. So I DNF'd it. Whether I'll go back to it or not, I don't know. I know loads of people absolutely love it, um, but I am in a bit of a minority about that. I was also listening to... Um, I was reading Babel on my Kindle. I was listening to Demon Copperhead um, on Audible. I finished that, gave it five stars. It was superb. But if you've not heard of Demon Copperhead, it's a book by Barbara Kingsolver based on David Copperfield. It's a, a modern day, more modern day take of the David Copperfield story. The narration was outstanding. It was the story itself was fabulous but the narration really made it so I really enjoyed that um oh just bend down and pick up a couple of books I have read Mother's Boy by Patrick Gale Patrick Gale is um fast becoming my most favorite author of the moment and this book did not disappoint it's the story of a uh, English poet Charles Causley, his years growing up in Cornwall and his experience in the Navy. Yes, in the Navy. Um, Patrick Gale is such a beautiful writer. He's He writes very quiet, beautiful books and I just cannot get enough of him. So this, this was a five star read for me. I read Tidelands, I'll put a picture up here, Tidelands, all there, by Philippa Gregory. Um, I've got a bit of a thing about historical fiction at the moment. Um, so this was a book about a woman called El Eleanor, who was the, set in the 1600s at some point. Um, and it was, oh, come on Emma. Al Eleanor is the descendant of a wise woman and in the time that this book was set there is a lot of distrust and fear about um, wise women and Eleanor has specific skills around the use of herbs and potions and things like that um, and so it's basically a book about is she a witch um, and the, the fear that her local community have about the things that she can do it's a bit of a love story um and there's um some intrigue and things like that i really enjoyed it it was narrated really well i can't remember who the narrator was yes i can or can i no i can't remember uh, but all the details are on my goodreads if you're interested in going and having a look there but yes yeah, so tidelands by philippa gregory it's the first of a trilogy and i've actually got the second of the trilogy just there oh this could end in disaster but it won't so there's the second book i picked that up in a second hand shop um so look forward to reading that at some point uh, but yes, yeah, so Tideland's really good. Um, I read I read and listened to um, The Secret Garden with a group of friends um, in March. Um, I'd never listened or read The Secret Garden. It's a beautiful story about the coming of spring and um, children. Um, it's a children's book. It, it was lovely. It was really sweet. And I loved the description of nature um, and how spring 
comes into the story. It's lovely. Um, I listened to the version on Audible that was narrated by Carrie Hope Davis. I had to stop listening to it because her um, some of her ac Yorkshire accents were just dreadful. And in particular, her use of the hard T. Um, I'm not going to get into the technicalities of it, but the book is thought to be based somewhere near where I grew up as, as a teenager. And never in my life did I hear anyone talking in the way that she um, accented the Yorkshire accent. It really grated on me. So I read, I read maybe about two thirds of the book and that was a much better experience for me. Um, I started to read the Ruth Galloway series by an author called Ellie Griffiths. So I read the first book, which was called Crossing Places. Ruth Galloway is a forensic archaeologist. Um, the book is set in Norfolk and there's something like 15 books in the series, maybe even more. I thoroughly enjoyed the first book and I am going to be listening, reading. Hopefully, I think I think this is a series I would like to read rather than listen to. But I'm going to be reading um, many more of those. Very, very good. And then my current book, last book, uh, that I'm reading is this. I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman. You can see it's a really short book and I'm just got that much more to read. Uh, I had seen this on the Savage Reads booktube video book channel um, and he said that Richard had said that it was his one of his most newest favourite books um, and it if I just read the back of it for you. Um, Deep underground, 39 women live imprisoned in a cage. Watched over by guards, these women have no memory of how they got there, no notion of time and only vague recollections of their lives before. As the burn of electric light merges day into night and numberless years pass, a young girl, the 40th prisoner, sits alone and outcast in the corner. But soon she will show herself to be the key to the other's escape and survival in the strange world that awaits them above. Uh, and I am in the above bit now. It's I love it. I'm really enjoying it. it it's an interesting book. It's been narrated uh, from French, I think, by Ros Schwartz. Um, it's, it's an interesting writing style. It's almost simplistic. And I do wonder if that's because it's written from the perspective of the younger woman in the book. And she has um, no concept of education or language, just what she's picked up in the um, underground bunker. So I wonder if that's why it's more simplistic in its language. But it's intriguing and I'm really enjoying it. It's very sort of dystopic, post-apocalyptic. Something has happened um, and I want to know why. So I will let you know how I get on with the rest of it um, when it's finished. OK, I have got one more thing to talk about and that is what is in my shop. And I am going to come back and do that in a little while because my camera battery is flashing. So I will see you very soon in a second for you in maybe about an hour for me okay i'm back it's about an hour later it's got so dark outside we've certainly lost the sunshine it's been blowing an absolute hoolie um it's really dark um i've had to put the light on and i've had my lunch and i thought while i'm while i'm in a chatty mood i thought i would just share this book with you it's dr rupee cooks i've had this book for maybe about 14 months now since it came out. I'm a big, big fan of his. He he talks and writes a lot about how um, food and lifestyle can help improve your general health. Uh, and from my perspective, he speaks a lot of sense. Um, and I had this cookbook for, well, since last January when it came out. And I kid you not, I have used it every single week um, probably a couple of times a week. My husband and I share the cooking. He adores cooking and I am allowed to cook twice a week, sometimes three times if I'm lucky, uh, but that's fine. Um, 
and um, the two nights I cook I do tend to cook out of this and um, there are some absolutely cracking recipes but I just thought I'd share what I had for lunch which was last night's leftover dinners and it was this simple fish stew with garlic aioli Ooh, it was lovely it's basically fish and um, uh, fennel and uh, onion and peas and spinach cooked in a stock and garlic mayonnaise broth and you make the garlic mayonnaise yourself it was absolutely delicious but I cannot recommend this book more highly it's really really good it's there's a lot of variety most of his meals are um well actually there's a good there's a there's a good deal of variety um barely have i cooked anything that hasn't worked in this um and we have an awful lot of his meals on rotation and do not get bored so um big dr rupee fans in this house anyway the real purpose of me coming back just brief briefly um is to share what i've got currently in my shop i try not to talk too much about my shop because um this is more about my knitting but sometimes um shop updates and um recording a video the the timing of it works out quite nicely so i i had my main shop update last week post east anglia yarn festival um, there's still a good amount of stuff in there because there was an awful lot of stuff that went in and I thought I would show you a handful of the bags to give you a taste of what there is and some of my favourite skeins of yarn. So I've got a really big box down here of things to show you and I'm just going to go through them as, um, as, they, as I get to them. So I've got some of these, this is an old, not old, but an old favourite cottage garden in my midi size um, midi size is good for um, sort of shawls small garments maybe a couple of projects that sort of thing um, drawstring no, and um, yeah I love this fabric you can see see all like, the, the ducks on there some of the bags will have cottages you can see a little bit of the cottage there um yeah so that's cottage garden i can't tell you off the top of my head how many of each of these things i've got in stock and what sizes they're in um because everything that is in the shop at the moment is ready to ship and it's leftovers so leftovers that sounds terrible it's what is left from east anglia so it's a real sort of hodgepodge of, of things and it's, it's definitely worth a look if you're looking for a new project bag so cottage garden that's the midi size should i just show you the pockets as well all my midi and xl bags have got pockets on both sides so a couple of pockets there and then on this side you've got a pocket and some oh, can't find it some smaller pockets there to put crochet hooks and pens and things in so one of those I've also brought down this this is a new fabric to the shop this is called folk pasture again this is in the midi size but I think there are some other sizes available I love this one I also love this one I mean I basically use fabrics that I love so um I won't say I love this one to all of them but this is uh navy foliage in the extra large size I'll just show you it it's huge the extra large is a really good size uh good for um oh larger projects like sweaters and blankets and things or not um i've got a range that i'm calling flock of sheep this is new to the shoppers newish to the shop as well um, i did do this fabric a couple of years ago as a newsletter subscriber special but um, i've brought it back um because i've been asked for it so yeah and i've got a new um sort of zipped size pouch as well which is good for, sorry hiding my mouth good for like one skein projects and that's the midi size as well so that's flock of sheep um 
got an XL in this lovely blowing out a bit but this is my summer meadow fabric uh, got one of these this is teal meadow again XL uh, and then excitingly I've got the third of my Eldenwood exclusive fabric so um, if you've been here for a while, you know that I've been trying to develop my own range of fabric that I will use exclusively for the shop um, so that I don't have to rely as much on buying fabric commercially. So what I do is I, um, I purchase digital assets and put them into um, a file sometimes I have to manipulate it, sometimes I have to arrange it um, and then send that file off to printers for testing for samples and things like that and I have now got my third um, of those fabrics and it's this. So this was um, premiered at East Anglia and this is what I'm calling Bluebird. Again this is a midi size. Um, I'm not sure that there are any left in the shop because this was really popular at um, East Anglia and at the update but um, and this is going out to someone else uh, this weekend uh, but yeah you can see um, some lovely bluebirds sitting on branches I really like this no I said I wasn't going to say that <laughs> anyway so bluebirds so look out for that one if you're interested I will have more of that going in the shop fairly soon um, in the shop I've got a new feature on the app um, that allows you to, where, where a product has sold out, you can put your email address into a box and when I add more of that stock to the um, website, you'll get an email notification to let you know that it has been restocked. Um, newsletter subscribers um, via my website will have advance notice usually of um, those updates. Certainly the main updates, I might... Um, sort of add small ad hoc updates um, to restock um, without, um, well no I will be telling newsletter subscribers, uh, anyway, so but there's that new feature, the restock feature, so if you're interested in something that's sold out, add your email address and that will help me um, make things for the shop that people actually want, um, so yeah, so yarn, I brought, I brought a section, um, what I did for East Anglia, because I'm so new to dyeing and I haven't got um, sort of collections or established colourways yet. So what I chose to do was just to have fun with the dye pots and, and create some colourways that I liked that could become staples for the shop in the future. So I, I um, dyed on three bases. So your standard sock, but, and you saw, um, <clears throat> you saw the golden ticket earlier. So standard sock, yak merino nylon in fingering weight, excuse me, <coughs> and um, DK merino nylon. And I've just brought a handful of my favourite skeins to show you. And I think we'll start with, um, we'll start with the DK. Here they are. So we have got headlights which is a sort of a nice neutral um, neutral color with some gray speckles and some yellow um, flashes we've got berry which is a nice sort of tonal um, soft pinks and purples pink lemonade again a pink tonal Uh, I guess, which is a sort of tonal semi-solid blue. I couldn't think what to call this, and I was sort of brainstorming a name with myself. Um, and I said, "What's what? What is it? It's it's a it, they're blues." And so I, then I went from blues to I guess that's why they call it the blues. So that's why that's I guess. I was asked that a few times at East Anglia. Um, I have got cliff top. Nice blues and browns. 
Uh, got Undercover Fox. And lastly for the DKs, I think, yeah, we have got Puffin. So I've taken the colours of the Puffin and sort of speckled and layered them up. I think that's really sweet. So obviously these DKs are great for socks, hats, cowls, um, for adding into other projects. Um, most of them, there are like two or three skeins left. Um, so you wouldn't um, be able to use them for a huge project like a sweater. But um, yeah, there's lots of them available. Right, so then I've got my yak base. So um, yak sock. 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, 10% nylon. And I've just brought four colourways down, but there are some more. So we've got, just to give you a flavour really, we've got beetle, which is this dark, um, sort of bluey grey. We have got Marrakesh, which is a lovely golden auburn colour. We've got Tarnished, which is slightly lighter than the Marrakesh. They would make a nice pair. Here's the plot synopsis. Thank you, thank you, Siri. Uh, and we have got Plunge, which is a really rich blue. A little bit greener than it's showing perhaps on the screen, but it's not not a bad representation okay so those are just some of the acts and then um, some of the standard sock um, that I particularly like uh, we've got Vermeer's Delft blowing out but it's um, sort of a orangey blues um, I took the colours of a picture of Delft that Vermeer had painted and took some of the colours out of that uh, we have got, uh, there's one um, one set of sock sets left. I have two sock sets, one called Frosty Morning and this one is Peony. So it's very subtle pinks and greens with a purple um, contrast mini. Posy. Oh, I've taken my socks upstairs, but um, if you remember the first pair of socks I showed you today, Posy, they were knit from uh, the first iteration of Posy. I had quite a few messages after my first update to say they'd, um, people would really like a skein of Posy. So I've made, um, I've dyed up some more. So dark. There we go. So dark, so light, so blow, blown out, sorry. So Posy is purples and greens and yellows and pinks. Pretty. Um, we have got Riverbed. So this is blues and greys and blues and greys and browns. We've got Winter Beach Walk, which was um, a colourway from my first collection. I didn't write the um, recipe down, so I've sort of reinvented it a bit, but it's very pale um, browns and greys and pinks and greens. Um, we have got Golden Ticket, which is um, the socks that I'm knitting these out of. And here it is in its skein. I love that one. We've got another very light one. This is called Clooney. Not named after George, but named after um, a ranunculus of the same name. So greens and pinks and greys again. Couple more sprouts. So lots of uh, tones of green and last but not least we have got uh, mineral 
So for my husband's birthday earlier this year, we went for a day trip down to Cornwall. Um, we went to Watergate Bay on the north coast, um, which is where he was brought up as a child. And I saw this stone, I should have brought it down with me. I saw this stone, it had the most beautiful colours in and it was next to this beautiful blue rock pool. And so, Mineral was born. There are loads more different colourways, but that was just a selection. I could be here all day and show you them, but I'm sure none of us were that. Um, yeah, so if you're interested, it'd be lovely to see you over in the shop. Um, in terms of making, for the next two or three weeks, I will be making project bags um, to replenish some of the out of stock bags that are in, not in the shop at the moment. And then I'm going to do a week or two of yarn dyeing where I'm going to create a collection. I've got an idea in my head that I want to um, pull together. So yeah, I'm going to be working on some yarn for the shop. Now I need to decide whether I fill the shop up with lots of those skeins or whether I do it on a pre-order basis. I'm tempted to go the latter with a few skeins for the shop, but we'll see. I'll obviously let everyone know. Um, that is all I'm going to share with you today. I suspect it's been a long one. If you're still watching, thank you ever so much. I really appreciate it. Um, if you are still here, don't forget to um, like the video if there's been anything in here that has um, engaged you or you found interesting or pretty or funny or um, whatever. <laughs> uh, but it would be lovely to have your um, approval through a thumbs up on YouTube because that uh, helps YouTube know that um, people are watching my video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel then um, you can do that as well, that would be lovely. I will be back at the end of April with my April making roundup and um, information about what I've been reading and what's been going on with the shop. So until then, um, have a very happy Easter weekend if you're watching over the Easter weekend. Uh, if you're watching after the Easter weekend, just have a lovely day, a lovely week and make sure you find some time for yourself and for your making and I will speak to you soon. Lots of love. Bye.